So, go ahead. I know that it's highly disputed that there is a lot of uh, conflicting ideas about it and that it has been considered to be politically charged, which is unfortunate because the death of Senator Lautenberg should not be something which turns into a political circus. But unfortunately, in this state, it happens all too often. So you seem pretty informed. Do you know who you're going to vote for if you're going to vote? Uh, I know I'm not going to vote. and. I'm not actually aware of who the new candidates are. Why aren't you going to vote? For any I wouldn't have even known about it if I hadn't talked to you guys. But I just, I know that they said after Lautenberg died that Chris Christie was doing something really sneaky, sneaky in the special election because he didn't want to face an election against Cory Booker, who would draw in a lot of Democratic votes and potentially lose the other seat, so that he had to. Uh, he had to sneak it in so that those same people didn't come out to vote twice, which, if true, is incredibly dastardly. So the person who takes this space, no matter who it is, what kind of values, what kind of ideas do you want them to have as a representative of your government? Just in general? Yeah. Well, I personally think that the eradication of poverty and the preservation of the environment are the two most pressing issues, both domestically and internationally. So, for example, if someone were to come into that spot who did not, like, think it was pressing to urge the Senate to take care of climate change issues, for example, that would be a terrible waste, particularly because, I mean, I was just, okay, I was just listening to this on the radio. They were saying that Chris Christie is uniquely positioned as a powerful Republican, a popular Republican, a Republican with national stature, but who at the same time has personal a, a personal relationship with the, the effects of climate change and therefore it was like first of all unsure which way he was going to fall but second of all very very important because of Chris Christie with his clout and with his like people that he's going to like promote to fill the Senate seat if they fall on the right side of climate change and do the right thing that's a big big swing from some Republican who's going to like further like make it impossible for the Senate to do any work oh, and also I mean with the the thing with the the filibuster and the way that the Senate is set up right now, the idea that New Jersey, like a cosmopolitan state, a state that is forward leaning for the most part, would like possibly give another critical vote to that, that mass that can disrupt uh, the running of the Senate. That's a terrible. I mean, the prospect of that is very scary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you talked about eradicating poverty as kind of a general term. Do you have any, not really advice, you know, ideas that you can specifically Well, I, I, so I read about uh, economics a lot, and one thing that we're always talking about is uh, transfer payments in the government. That can take the form of things like food stamps, things, all, all sorts of programs for the poor, and um, that type of thing is critical. And, and uh, for, for example, they're talking about the idea of extricating food stamps from the farm bill. So instead of it being entirely like an agriculture thing, that food stamps, that program will be considered a poverty eradication measure and not lumped in with uh, de Department of Agriculture measures. And a lot of people think that that's really important, but they're trying to hold the two together because there's this classical alliance between producers and between liberal Democrats that are trying to keep the issue as one, even though it shouldn't technically be one. So. Things like that, if we could iron out to make sure that it was clear that people need to eat. Or like, or like okay, so again, for food stamps, like the idea that people would have food stamps that would work for like going to McDonald's or something, it's atrocious. I mean, it's, it's, it's offensive. So someone who would push, like what I would ideally do would be to increase the ability of particularly seniors, disabled people, and children living in poverty to have access to food stamps, but at the same time make it so that they were very strictly controlled for the most healthy things. So and if you were to, so that's the kind of thing that would have support on one hand from one side of the constituency and have support on the other hand from the other side of the constituency. And that's the kind of thing that's uh, the, the bridge building that is so sorely lacked in the government these days, in uh, New Jersey and, inter and nationally. Well, I see, I don't know how much what I'm saying has to do with this specific Senate election, so if what I'm saying has no relevance, I apologize. It's, it's in and out. A lot of what we're asking people is just, like, what they want their government to do, you know, and, like, what they want the new person who's being elected to do. So all the stuff you have 
said, the last like, two questions has to do with what they want their government to do. I, I want our government to try and, like, you have right now, you have people who are these very pro-capitalists, but they have this, like, libertarian capitalism, which is, like, which is, like, screw the little guy, and, and, and like, you know, like, every man for himself sort of thing, like, sell anything to anyone without restrictions, and on the other hand, you have these people who are charitably minded, but they're not advocating any sort of, like, like, when it comes to advocating, like, uh, taxes and subsidies and policies that incentivize and disincentivize behavior, they're much more nebulous. So if there was some way to combine a very a sharp, critical use of economic policy, taxes and subsidies, incentives and disincentives to encourage behavior, but do that with the broad scope idea in mind of encouraging behavior that's socially responsible, environmentally sustainable, and helps to like make our society more equitable. That's the ideal combination. And it would be required to draw on ideas from both sides of the spectrum, which is something which is like the biggest stumbling block right now in the Senate. So if this senatorial election can bring someone into the picture who's able, who's willing to take a stand on the right side of that sort of uh, bipartisan bridge building, that's probably the single most important thing that I would like to see in the senatorial candidate who's going to be elected. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Uh, have you ever heard of Frank Cologne? He's the Middlesex County Rep. I've heard of him, but I, I'm not familiar enough with local politics to make an informed uh, statement about him. Okay. He's one of the people who are running. Yeah. Uh, also, Cory Booker and Rush Holt. Yeah, Cory Booker, Cory Booker is a coward, right? I'm sorry. He should be running for governor against Christie, but he's scared of Christie. And I heard someone say, and this is true, even if he loses, if he throws his hat in the ring, throws down with Chris Christie, it was like two titans with big name recognition going against each other and shakes up the political discourse, that would be worth it. I like Cory Booker a lot. I saw him on Charlie Rose. I thought what he was saying was brilliant. I really, really like him, but it is cowardly that he's not going for the gubernatorial seat. That's interesting. That's fair. I didn't think about that. Well, I'm not trying to spin it, but no, I yeah. An interesting angle, I guess, is the word. Yeah, I mean, I hope he wins. He's going to be a good senator, but he, I, I think, it. Cory Booker's been accused of thinking about Cory Booker a little too much sometimes, and I think that that criticism is exactly what we're seeing, right? I think that criticism is being borne out by, by this selection. So it's not like he's doing a bad thing, but there's a little bit of thought about Cory Booker in the back of his mind there, instead of in exclusively about the, the people of New Jersey. And I don't want to say anything bad about him because I really like him. <laughs> he's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, thank you. What's your name? My name is Andrew Cross, New Brunswick resident.